So in the last lecture, we looked at uh, the elements, how their electrons were distributed between their shells. Uh, so for example, here, this is a carbon. Uh, it has six protons. That's a characteristic of that particular element. Uh, it's also going to have six electrons. Those electrons are distributed now between two shells. Uh, two electrons fill up the first shell. And then of the remainder, those four go into the uh, second shell. Uh, so it has four electrons in this outermost shell, and that outer shell will be full with eight electrons. That means it still needs four more electrons to fill up that shell, and that's going to be um, how we're going to start off talking about bonding and chemical bonding. So for a carbon, what we are going to focus in on are what we're going to refer to as the valence electrons. The valence electrons are these ones in the outer shell, and we're going to be ignoring any inner electrons for now. So there's four electrons uh, in the outer shell. It needs four more uh, to fill up that shell. If we had, say, a hydrogen, and the hydrogen has a single electron, they're going to share electrons. And that's going to be a covalent bond. OK, so covalent bonding is when uh, two elements are going to share electrons to try and fill their outer shell. Right? And, and, then, then the, and then they're going to just keep sharing until they can fill that shell. Now, for hydrogen, it's done. That's it. It needed one. It got the one that it needed, and that formed a bond. The carbon still needs more. Okay, So it can form bonds with other elements as well, which is shown here. Um, but often what we're going to find in a lot of the biological molecules, the lipids, the sugars, proteins, and so on, are that often carbons and hydrogens go together quite often. Uh, so I'm going to put another hydrogen up here, but then what I'm going to do is add in a carbon right here. And that carbon's going to have one, two, three, four. So now we have another bond here. This is slightly different. This is a bond between a carbon and a carbon. And here we have a bond between a carbon and a hydrogen. So there's a similarity between them and that they're both sharing electrons uh, to help fill the shells. But there's a difference in that they're two different elements, you know, the, the car this carbon here and this hydrogen over here. So another question we would have is, is how are they sharing the electrons? Are they sharing them equally or unequally? And what I mean by that is every element has a certain pull on the electrons. So this we're talking about is electronegativity. Um, uh, and we're going to have the, the strength of an uh, element's pole on electrons from other elements, and in this case, atoms, because it could actually be the, the same element, so a carbon and a carbon, for example. And so this is electronegativity, the strength of the pull. And there are a number of things that are going to determine electronegativity. One of these things are going to be the number of protons. So if electronegativity is the pull on electrons, what is going to be pulling on electrons? Positive charge, so protons. So one way of looking at this is the more protons you have, the stronger the electronegativity should be. So in the, in the case of these particular elements here, they're all going to have two shells, a first shell and a second shell, carbon with four in that second shell, uh, nitrogen with five, oxygen with six. Uh, in addition to that, um, oxygen is going to have eight protons total in the nucleus, and so it's going to have a stronger pull. So of these, oxygen has the strongest pull. And that's the strongest electronegativity. All right. So that means if it's sh oxygen is sharing electrons with these other elements, they're not going to share them equally. And the same goes for you know nitrogen and carbon. It, it's more electronegative. Nitrogen and hydrogen. Nitrogen is going to be more electronegative and so on. Now, but for hydrogen and carbon, they're two different elements, and they do have different numbers of uh, protons, so you would think carbon would be a lot stronger. But another factor here is going to be the number of shells. In this particular case, the more shells you have, the weaker the electronegativity, because the distance between the electrons and the protons, it's further away. Right? So, uh, here for the carbon, even though it has more protons, the protons are further away from the nucleus. Sorry, the electrons are further away from the nucleus um, 
electrons and protons are not as close as they are in the first shell, and that means hydrogen with just its one electron in the first shell, it's one proton. You would think very weak, but actually it's about the same as carbon. All right, so that, those two things are going to factor in. And in this case, what that means is that carbon and carbon, they're the same element. So that's going to be the same electronegativity. Hydrogen and carbon, different elements. They have slightly different electronegativities, but overall they are actually very much the same. This is going to be uh, an important exception because you're going to see it a lot. Uh, hydrogen and carbon are going to share equally. So they're going to have an equal sharing of electrons. And now this type of covalent bond where we have equal sharing is what we're going to call a nonpolar. Nonpolar because it does not create any type of charge. The electrons are shared equally. They're equally positive, equally negative. There's, there's, going, there's back and forth, and it's a fairly uh, equal amount of time that the electrons are spending with each element. Now, the exception to this is when we start to see um, something else, like oxygen, for example. Now, oxygen has its one, two, three, four, five, six electrons in the outer shell. So now we're going to have a bond here between an oxygen and a carbon. Okay. Oxygen's going to be more electronegative, it's going to have a stronger pull. What's going to happen then is the oxygen is going to start to take on more of a negative charge because it feels like it's taken the electron from the other element. And this element here also feels like it's lost uh, an electron, so it can carry a partial positive charge. So we're going to have here unequal sharing. And with unequal sharing, we're going to create what's called a polar covalent bond. So it's still a covalent bond because we're sharing electrons. But it's going to be a polar one because we're going to be creating charge. And now the same thing if we add a hydrogen in here to fill this out. Now the oxygen has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight electrons. It's done. This hydrogen has two. The, the, um, well, this one's still missing a, an electron. They could still take on uh, two more bonds in there. Um, but as far as the ones I've drawn on the board, you can kind of see uh, what's going on. This one here, also going to be unequal. So that's going to be polar. All right, and this is going to be important because now this is going to create a molecule that's going to be a polar molecule. Uh, so in the last, last video, I um, sketched water. Water is a very significant polar molecule for us because it is the solvent that we find within cells uh, in most of our, of our biological systems. And water as a molecule is going to be a polar molecule. It's a polar molecule because it's made up of oxygen and hydrogen, so our H2O. One oxygen, two hydrogens. The sharing between the hydrogens and the oxygen of the electrons, it's not equal. Right? Oxygen is going to take on the electrons uh, for a longer period of time. And so it's going to feel as if it's gained those electrons and it's negatively charged. The hydrogens are going to feel like they've lost their electron and they're going to be positively charged. This is a chart that's in flux in chemistry. It'd be referred to as a dipole moment where the electrons are, are not being shared equally, so it creates charge. Uh, but the charge is in flux, meaning that they do share. It's not a complete theft of electrons. So this one does get uh, an elect electrons from hydrogen, but hydrogen will get an electron from oxygen as well. So there's actually small moments in time where the charge would be neutral, even the hydrogen being negatively charged, because it has always the one proton. That's never going to change the number of protons, but it will feel like it's got its second electron to fill that shell, which me makes it two electrons, one proton, so it'd be negatively charged. But the amount of time it spends in that state is very small compared to the amount of time it spends without the electrons. So we create molecules with this constant flux or change of charge, um, but there tends to be uh, oxygen maintaining more so of a negative charge and the hydrogens maintaining a positive charge. That means when these two molecules would interact with each other, in this area here, there's no charges. So this part of it won't really interact with the water molecule. 
But over here in this part of the molecule, here we're going to have positive around the hydrogen, negative around the oxygen. And so when these, water, these two molecules are near each other, so we have a water molecule here, and then there's this um, We'll just do it like this here. Um, this hydrogen and this oxygen are going to be attracted, you know, to each other. And that's what we're going to talk about next. So that attraction is going to start to form what we refer to as hydrogen bonding, and that's going to be the, the next topic. So it's a continuation of uh, polar covalent bonds that create polar molecules and then polar molecules are going to interact with each other through what we call hydrogen bonding. So that's the, the next part.